Bethune Cookman visited North Carolina AT with both squads looking to stay in the top tier of the MEAC standings as the cream begins to rise to the top in conference play. And Club Corbett was a movie. We had Tariq Cohen and the three Pete Celebration Bowl champs in VIP. The hot girl section was extra litty. And of course, the pregame dunk contest had more jams to Grandma's pantry. We got Cleetrell Pope doing his signature 360 windmill. Andre Jackson with a windmill off the bounce. Then it's above the rim slim, AKA I jump too much Quay Parker doing a 360 and a windmill off the bounce. Both teams hot out the gate. Big Ron Jackson coming through with 11 points in the first half. Quay Parker showing off the range with the three. Then it looked like he was about to baptize old buddy right here, but he just blessed him with a finger roll instead. But won't nobody hotter from beyond the arc than Bethune's Joe French. He went foe for foe like he was ordering from Wendy. And this dunk off the fast break by Cleetro Pope gave Bethune Cookman a six point lead with seven minutes left to play in the half, but AT was on the comeback. Tyrone Lyons gets his own board and the putback. Then comes right back down the court with the big boy block. And on the next episode of the first 48, Body on the Rim, the story of Isaiah Bailey's deadly trip to the basket. Bailey had a game high 18 points in the first half, but AT made a couple of plays late and goes into the locker room with a three point lead, 48 to 45. And I gotta shout out the guys at Protect Your Skull and Jamey Martin as he received his HBCU Game Day Offensive Player of the Year trophy just before half. It's well deserved and he'll be back, so he might just end up with two of them things if he keeps at it. Now in the second half, Quay Parker must have been feeling like Gucci Mane in 2006, cause this right here ain't make no sense. Above the rim slim tears the club up with the oop from Cam Lane. Then Cam gets the steal. Finds Dre Day Jackson who gets the three. And the hot girls love it. Aggies up nine early in the second half. But Cleetrell Pope bringing them Wildcats back. First it's a grown man and one in the paint. Then a two-handed jam on the fast break. Aggies with the counterpunch. It's still DRE with the steal and the flush to put a t back up a 10 spot. Now Duke Deuce told us Crunk ain't dead, and neither is the mid-range jumper. Jordan Priester knocks down the two, Wally Parks knocks down the three, and Bethune is only down four. Then it's Houston Smith driving baseline for the lay. Then he goes right down the middle plus the foul, and Bethune Cookman retakes the lead. But Cam Langley says bump all that. He takes it strong to the cup like a shot of 151. On the very next play, Cam's right back to the rim with the up and under layup, and the game is tied at 82. Andre Jackson, pump fakes to the up and under layup. Then it's Cam Langley with the floater over the trees, and the Aggies are up five with under a minute left to play. But the Wildcats get a couple free throws, plus a silky fadeaway off the inbound that cuts the lead down to one. But a t makes their free throws down the stretch and shuts down any hopes of a three to tie it up at the buzzer with some good defense off the inbound, and a t gets the 98-95 win. They hold firm in the second spot in the MEAC with the team above them coming to Club Corbett next Saturday, and I, for one, cannot wait. You ever felt what a garage flow felt like? Imagine sleeping there. Old pool room, that's the road we stayed on when we stayed in the garage. I used to let my mom and my little brother had a couch, I had a floor, but that's where it all started at. The rug had been swept from underneath our feet. And we kind of hit rock bottom at one point, sleeping on the floor, you know, not eating a lot, see where we at now, see the success he's having. Them long nights, them cold nights, that's what made me. That's how I be known when I go against certain guys, like you ain't, you know what I'm saying, you ain't go through that, you ain't built like that. He's not the tallest, he's not the biggest, but every time we get on the court against anybody else, he dominates. Anywhere there was a ball or a basket, that's what Roger was, it did not matter. That's about the only thing that got me through it, really. No matter how good I play, they always, he's too small, he's too small. That garage could have broke us, that garage could have made us anything, but it, it made us stronger.